Marco Island Center for the Arts. My name is Hyla Crane and we are thrilled that you could join us for another edition of our Art Center Live. My guests today are Scott Gilbert and Bill Lee, who are two of the leaders of what will be the second annual wine tasting and auction event that will take place tented in the parking lot of the Marco Island Center for the Arts the evening of March 31st, 2022. Now there are still tickets available, but there probably won't be for long. So if you're interested, go on our website or give us a call because it will certainly be a dazzling and delightful evening that you won't want to miss. Hello, Scott. Hello, Bill. How are you today? Great, Isla. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining me. Now, I want people to get to know a little bit about what they can expect at this event. So we're going to start by talking a little bit about the wine tasting component. And perhaps you can talk to us a little bit about the wineries or the distributors that are going to be here and the wines that people can expect. Because I know these aren't your everyday, ordinary wines. These are very special. So can you tell us a little bit about the wineries? Sure. Um... I'll start with Hailstone Vineyards, uh, Chris Sazo and uh, uh, Jessica uh, from Hailstone. They um, hail from uh, Na Naples, actually, and uh, they have a, a winery out in uh, Napa. Uh, they were also at our first annual um, event, and uh, they have some wonderful wines, uh, Cabernet, uh, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, uh, and they're introducing this year uh, and they're quite excited about it, a um, uh, Grenache-based uh, uh, rosé. So uh, at our event, they will have uh, all those wines. Uh, the Cabernet uh, that they have, they have a reserve. Uh, they also have a regular Cabernet, but uh, they're all very, very nice wines. Um, uh, we look forward to having them. Uh, they were here last year, and uh, they'll be here again this year. Uh, the other winery from California is Learner Project. Um, kind of new on the scene. Uh, they've been around since uh, I believe 2015 was their first vintage. But uh, this is a really, really fantastic winery. Uh, they're uh, up on Diamond Mountain, uh, uh, really well-funded um, uh, uh, place. Um, Stu Learner is a very passionate uh, collector, lover of wine, um, and he brought in probably one of the leading winemakers in uh, Napa Valley, uh, Russell Bevan. Uh, Russell uh, is a rock star uh, winemaker, and uh, that shows through in Learner Projects wines. Uh, I believe Stu's going to be bringing his uh, he has three or four Cabernets, um, Sauvignon Blanc, and uh, uh, it'll be fun to have Stu there. He's a great guy, and uh, his wines are really fantastic. They're awesome. They're delicious. Um, we also have, uh, for the first time, a, uh, a winery from, from Italy, Podera Conca, uh, Bulgari winery. And uh, Ada Squazzo uh, is uh, coming all the way from Italy to pour wines at our event. And uh, they have... Um, Three wines. Uh, they're bringing a, um, a white wine, uh, a um, which has indigenous Italian grapes in it, and uh, two two red wines uh, in their portfolio that they're going to be pouring for us. And it's very exciting uh, to have um, Ada coming uh, all the way from Italy to pour wines for us. It's going to be very exciting to have her. Um, the other distributor we have um, who will be pouring wines is Southern Glazers, and they're the largest um, distributor of wine and spirits in the U.S. Um, they're coming uh, with a handful of different red wines and some um, bubbles, some champagne, and uh, I think we'll have uh, some fun with uh, uh, Southern Glazers, that's for sure. And some spirits. Now, with those wine tastings, um, are people, if they, if there's something they like, is there a way that they're going to be able to order from these people? I know we can't sell wine here. We don't have a, a, the capacity to do that. But will they be able to order from these wineries or distributors and make arrangements to purchase? Yes, absolutely. Uh, anything that people taste at the um, 
event they'll be able to purchase and pick up later at a retail outlet close by. Excellent. Now, we've talked about a couple of the vineyards, and I noted when I was looking at the list for the auction, which is really very exciting, that both Hailstone and the Learner Project are actually donating wines to the live auction. The live auction was probably the highlight of last year's event. It was uh, very exciting for everybody. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the wines that are going to be in this live auction? I know that there are 12 lots, but I know that the last lot is actually spirits and not wine. So can you tell us a little bit about the wines that we can expect to see in this live auction? Well, first, uh, I'll let Bill uh, uh, talk about some of the wines uh, because uh, some of the nicer wines in the live auction are Bill's. Uh, but one of the things that from the first annual uh, event that we started out saying is that the second annual event was going to be bigger and better and uh and it's going to be uh, uh we're going to have um, first of all physically uh <laughs> the footprint of our event is going to be bigger um it's going to be better because we have actually uh, more lots uh, more silent auction lots i i think the quality of the lots are uh, better than last year there's more uh and i think our live uh uh, auction lots are uh, even better than last year. So uh, I think we have better music. We're going to have the same uh, food uh, supplier as last year, which was the uh, Carvelli Restaurant Group. Those guys did a fantastic job last year. Uh, we've talked to them and they we've huddled with them. They're going to outdo themselves this year. So we can count on things being uh, bigger and better. And uh, Bill can talk a little bit about uh, a couple of the lines of the live auction. Yeah, well, I mean, Scott's not exaggerating when he said we're going big this year because uh, we've got some big bottles. And here's here's an example. This is a three liter of Chateau Mouton from 2003. Um, that was the anniversary year. Usually Mouton does a uh, an artist label. They commission a, an artist every year to do the label. This particular year doesn't have an artist label. It actually has a... a photograph a painting of their founder uh, and Baron von Rothschild and it's a big bottle of really highly rated Bordeaux wine um, one of the top wines in the world guy you want to talk about Saskia yeah this is another uh, big party in a bottle three liters of uh, world-renowned 2009 vintage uh, Saskia I really shouldn't even have to chat this one up. It's, no, uh, sell, sell. it's a Super Tuscan, the very first Super Tuscan. And uh, uh, that's a, a brand and a wine that is uh, world famous for sure. One of the um, rarer lots we have on here is uh, we have a um, box set of wine from Next of Kin, which is an offshoot of Sine Qua Non made by Manfred Crankle. It's a... Uh, package of a magnum and three 750s very rare it's a beautiful package it's i mean you have to see the package to, to understand it but it's gorgeous packaging of exceptionally great wine this these wines will be legendary uh in years to come uh very concentrated in a manfred crankle style and if you love sine qua non you'll love next of kin it's his baby so to speak uh estate grown grapes and he really knows how to grow grapes not to mention rare very rare <laughs> I mean, they uh, put out only a limited number of box sets every year and that's the only way they sell the wine so if you're not on their mailing list and you don't get a box set um, that's the only place you can get it right another got there? another rare one we have uh, and it's a magnum is uh, uh original wooden case is uh a hundred acre uh and and the name says it all it's called precious and it is precious uh, because it is that rare. But uh, uh, it's a wonderful wine, very highly rated. Um, and again, uh, the rarity uh, of this one, it's a 2010 vintage, um, beautiful, original box. Uh, whoever gets that wine is not going to regret it, that I can tell you. Uh, another one is uh, this uh, Magnum bottle of... Uh, uh, from the uh, godfather of Amarone, Giuseppe Quintarelli. Uh, but in this case, he, he made a, um, a wine called El Zero. 
and uh, mainly Cabernet Franc. And uh, it is delicious wine, um, also quite rare. That'll stain your teeth. Yes, it will make you have a purple <laughs> smile, but it'll be a happy smile. Oh, it's wonderful wine. <laughs> Uh, we yes. also go ahead. Well, we also have uh, two in one lot. We have two magnums of Consgard, the Judge Chardonnay, and if you, there's Chardonnay from Napa, and then there's the Judge. That is, he, this wine is, in my opinion, the best Chardonnay made in the United States, and rivals uh, the white Burgundies, the best white Burgundies of France. Uh, it's grown up on a high up on a mountain, granite uh, mountain. Um, John Consgard has been making this wine for a long time. His father happened to be the judge of uh, Napa Valley at the time, common police judge. So he, in honor of his father, he named his best wine after his father, the judge. And it's, you have to taste this wine to understand the power of this wine and how uh, collectors from all over the world uh, go a great lengths to find and get this wine. It's very highly sought after, very expensive, but it's the best Chardonnay I've ever drank. And on top of it, it's in a large format, which big, uh, big. You, you don't see that. You no. just uh, very rare. You, you, you won't go into any wine store in the U.S. and find a large format. No judge Chardonnay. No, but uh, here you can get two uh, in our live auction. And you need a large format of that wine because one bottle is never enough. That's true. That's very true. We have uh, also two um, originally unopened uh, six packs of uh, Krug Champagne, which is one of the nicer champagnes in the world. Uh, we also have a six pack of uh, uh, outstanding Paul Hobbs Beckstoffer Tokelon uh, Vineyard. Uh, unopened, still film wrapped, never been touched, um, 2018 vintage, uh, wonderful, wonderful wine. Uh, Paul Hobbs, pretty, pretty famous guy out in Napa Valley. He's not, not, not his first time around. Uh, pretty good stuff. Um, we also have, um, uh, as we mentioned earlier, a Stu Lerner, Lerner Project is, is one of our live auction lots. He's offering, um, a uh, tasting out at his uh, location, uh, which is uh, a really nice lot. Um, and um, we have a um, spirits lot uh, as well, which uh, uh, maybe some of our uh, attendees uh, might occasionally have a, uh, a thirst for a spirit. Well, we have uh, five very unique spirits. Um, and I'll let Bill maybe talk about those a little bit. Because he likes spirits. <laughs> well, I'm spiritual. Well, yes, you are a little bit. We ha yeah, we have uh, four bottles of bourbon, and anybody that's uh, any knows anything about the spirits world these days knows bourbon is just getting so hard to find. And we put together uh, four very difficult to find bourbons and a bottle of extremely uh, wonderful vodka in a in a provocative bottle it's sexy it's really good <laughs> it's a beautiful crystal bottle you have to see the bottle to believe it it's just mm -hmm. a beautiful beautiful bottle but we have a bottle of blanton's uh, bourbon which is um used to be something you could go in and buy off the shelf and nowadays you're lucky to find it online and oftentimes you have to buy it in auction and secondary market um the same is true of a 10 year old eagle rare that we have um we have a, an interesting bottle uh, that uh, was picked up on a, on a tour of the Bourbon Trail a number of years ago, and it's the inaugural uh, bottling of uh, a brand made by Jim Beam called Booker's, and this is their little book. Uh, it's a very interesting spirit, uh, classified, I guess, as a, as a whiskey, uh, but it's made in bourbon country. Um, and we also have an inaugural uh, bottle of a very kind of new uh, place in Louisville called Peerless. And we were fortunate enough to be there many times. And we got to know the owner there, Corky Taylor. And um, at any rate, we ended up with a bottle of his Sweet Caroline Rye, which was award-winning. And it's just an amazing bottle of rye whiskey. 
very rare, extremely rare. But when you have this rye, you'll understand why he calls it Sweet Caroline. It's just delicious. Yeah, and it's a signed bottle uh, signed by bottle Corky. By Corky, and, yeah. And uh, it's, uh, again, a really cool lot. Uh, one other lot, last but not least, maybe, is uh, we have a Napa uh, experience, uh, which is a private home uh, out in Napa for four people. Uh, and uh, that includes a, um, uh, a tour uh, uh, out in uh, Napa that's uh, included in the lot. And um, also included in that lot is a uh, two uh, exclusive private tastings, uh, one with uh, Nyman Sellers, uh, with uh, Drew Nyman, and uh, uh, he, he is um, also, uh, and I will never remember the name of the cheese uh, uh, lady that he's... Uh, yeah, me neither. Uh, sorry. But she he, wrote a book called, you know, uh, yeah, Cheese for dummies. dummies. Yeah, and I guess we're dumb because we can't remember the name. <laughs> but anyways. Uh, he does a really nice uh, private exclusive tasting that lasts uh, several hours. So it's a pretty good tasting. And uh, yes. uh, and Drew's uh, wines are fantastic. Uh, also, Chris Zazo very graciously has uh, uh, also offered a, uh, a tasting at Vintner's Collective, his tasting room there, uh, which he will uh, um, pour for the four people as well um, uh, there too. So besides the stay and the uh, uh, tour uh, that's uh, involved with this uh, Napa experience uh, at a private home. Um, there's two very nice tastings involved with uh, two very great uh, wineries out there too. Well, these live auction items are tremendous. And of course, people can only have a chance to bid on them if they attend the event. But there are, is a remarkable amount of really fabulous silent auction items. And those items um, will be going up on a special website that we will make public. And people will have the opportunity, if they desire, and if they are in the area, to purchase those ahead of time with a buy now option. Is there anything, I know it's quite a long list, is there any item, one or two items from the silent auction that you might want to tell people about to tempt them? Well, once again, we have some very nice uh, wines, a large format, uh, a, a three liter Quintarelli Merlot, a uh, Moranetto Brunello Reserva in magnum form, uh, 2013 vintage, uh, several restaurants, Boo Provence, sales, um, there, there's there's a lot. We, we have a, some really beautiful uh, silent auction items that are uh, very and exciting, very good. Many of the wines that are in the silent auction could easily be in the live auction. Uh, you know, we're limited by time and space, et cetera, but some of the wines that are in the, in the silent auction are just not wines that you would see in your supermarket or even local wine store, to be honest with you. Uh, there's some sign bottles, large format. As an example, you know, a, a, a magnum of uh, Bonquella, uh, a, a very, very rare 750 of Realm uh, Absurd, which, uh, I mean, that's a 100-point wine, uh, very rare. Um, uh, you know, a large format hailstone. Uh, there's just a lot of nice, <laughs> a lot of nice wines. Yeah. Uh, engraved and signed uh, Robert Foley Claret. Beautiful wine from a great winemaker. Another one, very rare bottle. And some really nice uh, uh, baskets with uh, gift cards uh, to uh, restaurants uh, and uh, other other things. So the silent auction is, uh, I would just describe it as being at least uh, double the size that it was from last year. And there's some nice paintings, there's uh, some nice photography, um, uh, really nice items, beautiful. Well, it is going to be a remarkable evening for all who attend. So to sum it up, the second annual wine tasting and auction where we will have uh, wineries including, I'm not sure I can pronounce it, from Italy, Podero, Concha, well, can you help me, Scott? I know there's a Bulgari winery. A Bulgari winery. Um, we'll also have Hailstone Vineyards with Chris Zazo and Jessica Stutes. Stu Lerner, Lerner will come from the Lerner Project, and we'll have 
um, Southern Glazer Wine and Spirits. All will be pouring wines for you to taste and if you'd like them to purchase. There will be food served from all of the restaurants from the Carvelli Group, which was an enormous hit last year. They were tremendous supporters, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful sponsors for this event through their generosity in providing all of the food tastings. There is really an extraordinary um, silent auction, things that you would not be able to get any place else. And then, of course, a live auction of wines that have been so generously donated from people's private collections. When put together, this makes it an incomparable evening, one that everybody will enjoy. So I hope our friends out there um, are interested, and we hope that we see you on March 31st at the second annual wine tasting and auction at the Marco Island Center for the Arts. Scott, Bill, I want to thank you both for joining us today. And I want to let my friends out there know that tonight, from 5.30 to 7, we will have our second Tuesday art reception, and we are opening our members-only art show. This is the largest members-only art show that probably exists in the history of Marco Island Center for the Arts. There are 61 artists represented and 110 works of art, both two-dimensional and three-dimensional. So please come on down, 537, enjoy us, enjoy the art, and remember that when you cross our threshold, you become part of our art family, and we try every day, in every way, to be your art home. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.